It's actually a beautiful day outside. It's not too humid. Recently it's been so humid, so hot. And today it's actually pretty nice. We got some cloud cover in the air this morning. Um, the breeze is feeling pretty good because it's been dead calm, like no wind, like humidity through the roof. It has been so bad recently, but it just feels good to get outside without being drenched in sweat. Let me tell you, the last week has been brutal. It's been brutal. If you guys are down here, you guys already know something about the humidity, the thickness in the air. Like I went outside to get something out of my truck last night and I just like took a, a breather, man. I like... And I was like, whoa, it's just like this. the air is so thick. If you guys know what I'm talking about, let me know down below. But it's been a little weird. But if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And also hit the like button if you guys have been enjoying the content. Hope you guys are having a great morning. Today, we're going to be doing some frog fishing at a place that I haven't been to in a very long time. So let's go ahead and check out this place. So we got my rod right there, but no need to talk about that right now. But this is the beautiful little place that we're going to be fishing today. And yes, there's pads. That is uh, one of my favorite things to fish of all time is some pads. And we're gonna be taking the old brand new Six Sense Frog. We used it, I think, a couple, we used it a couple times before. Um, that's not the Pop and Pickle, that's a different one. Um, but it's still a sexy looking frog. It walks pretty good. It's still a juicy looking color too. And I got this paired up on my Mock Crush by Luz, if you guys were wondering, with 65 pound braid. And that is the setup right there. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into this. By the way, I'm gonna put out a little update I, about the Yachty video. You guys have been asking me about it. I, I believe it's dropping in a couple days, man. I believe it's dropping in a couple days. Just stay tuned to my Instagram. You need to go follow me there because I'll keep you guys updated. You know, I'll post stuff about it. Make sure I keep you guys informed. It's going to be awesome, guys. I'm excited to release this. It was a fun day on the water. Um, it was an awesome experience just because Yachty got to do something different that he's usually not doing every single day. So I think you guys are going to enjoy the video. It's going to be an awesome freaking video. It's one of my favorite videos we've ever filmed over the years that I've been doing it. But let's go ahead and get this started today. We're going to get that frog down there by the pads and hopefully get a fish. Fishing has been tough. We're going to try our best today. And you best to bet we got that big bass energy. All right, this is our first problem about this pond is it's very hard to fish. Like there's nowhere to really cast at to be honest with you and someone just dumped a bunch of crap right here where exactly where i used to fish i'm not feeling too good about this no snaky boys up in here boys we don't mess with no snakies we're gonna go around this way it was already hard enough to fish and they just dump a bunch of bunch of grass and tree branches and trash and gotta love that i might come back here and actually pick up some of this trash that might be what i I might end up doing that. Oh my gosh, because there's a lot of trash here. Do not litter, guys. Do not litter. Ooh, did something jump there? The water is moving. Let's see. Cast this frog on out. Oh my god. See, it's hard to cast everything about this situation. And then we got like trees above us. It's kind of hard to hook set. And you know, we got a frog too, so we're going to have to give it to him. I haven't been fishing here in a very long time. There's some good fish in here. I've caught some good ones on frogs. Like I said, the only bad part about this place is, you know, being able to fish it from the bank. It's it's pretty difficult. Rather than that, you know, and the bites don't come too easy. So, I mean, we're going to try our best. I just want to see if we can hook a big one. I've lost a few really good fish out here. I've caught a few pretty good fish too. Um, Alan Bob's caught a few good ones out here too. Um, I actually caught some on a rat. I'm just hoping we get slammed on this frog. Ah, oh, these pads are so thick. Why? Why would you do that? Don't do that to me. The grass looks so good. <laughs> Come on. What did I hook? Ah. Oh. First fish today, not really fish, but first little catch. Got some grass, nice. Oh, this is so hard guys, not gonna lie. This rod, this is my big honking frog rod. Let's catch over there. I'm telling you, we if we hook a fish, I don't even know how I'm gonna get him in. I'll, I'm gonna be honest with you.
<laughs> All right, so that other side was just so difficult. I'm not gonna lie, it was so bad. So I'm gonna come over here. We can actually cast. There's a bunch of little dollar pads. There's still some big pads. But there's a lot of dollar pads as well. And this frog actually goes through the dollar pad. If you guys don't know what a dollar pad is, really, really small lily pad, pretty much. There's a ton. Of oh, yeah, that's a good one. Hammered it through the dollar pads. Oh, he's not that big. What? <laughs> you seem so big. I thought you were a good one. I don't care, man. That was awesome. Look at that. Yo, look at that. Six cents frog just munched that thing right in the top of his mouth. That is awesome. Heck yeah, guys. Not a big fish by any means, but look how dark that bass is. If you guys are wondering why these fish get so dark when they live up in this vegetation, in these pads, in this dirty grass, that's the color that gets on their body. Look how dark that fish is. Beautiful one, though. Just about a pound. Hammered that frog. That was awesome right there. He came right through those dollar pads. This is going to be a lot of fun if we can catch him like that. I'm going to give him a toss because there is no, I'm not even near the water. I have to give him just a little throw. There he goes. Holy cow. First fish. That was awesome. He creamed it through the dollar pads. That was the first cast. That was a good sign. Oh man, that gets me excited, guys. So as I was saying, we we're talking about the dollar pads. This frog can go through the dollar pads a lot easier. See, when you're fishing like big pads, like these big thick pads, it's a little different. You're like trying to find those little open holes next to the pads to kind of get your frog through. Well, the dollar pads are a little bit different. You know, you can pretty much get your frog right through them. You know, they're so small that when you pop it, you're going right through it and the fish can hit it right through the dollar pads without a problem. Gosh, that has to be a good one. I mean, oh yeah, that's like a two pounder. Oh my gosh. Are they really going to do this right now? Look how dark he is. That's almost a two pound fish right there. If he was a little bit fatter. Right there. <laughs> Dude, you got to love frog fishing, guys. You got to freaking love it. Oh my God. They munching it. They're slamming it through those dollar pads. Dude, this is a good sign, man. Look at that beautiful bass. Another dark one. Almost two pounds. He's just so skinny, man. He's long. He's got the head of a two pounder. He's got the body of it. Just... Needs a little more weight. Thank you, bud. Dude, this is crazy, man. We might get on a crazy frog bite. Give him a throw. All right, holy cow. Guys, they are hitting this frog, man. That was two casts around the same spot of dollar pads. I'm popping it pretty quick, too. I'm not really letting it sit too long. I'm just popping it across those dollar pads, trying to get that bass's attention. And they're coming up and just hammering that thing. That one seemed like a big fish. First one I thought was a good one, too. When they hammer that frog, it's just so exciting. Get my frog a little messed up. And by the way, guys, these, you know, have not came out yet. I think you guys already know that. But um, for the people that have been asking me, hey, where can I get the Six Sense frog? They're actually not available. J they're not available yet. But I'll keep you guys updated on that. And when they come available, I'll let you guys know. But man, like I was saying, these dollar pads, they can be deadly. Popping this frog fairly quick through them. Trying to get a bass's attention. They are blowing up through these dollar pads, man. Let's keep on casting and see if we can get some more. We caught two in the same spot, so that's a good sign. That is money. We should get hammered right there, boys. All right, so I brought another rod out here just to try. I actually have a stroker curl on a Texas rig, and this is in Green Pumpkin Burst. This is the one I've been just whacking them on recently. I've had a lot of luck with this stroker curl. We're gonna throw this on the edge of these pads. I've actually seen some bait popping around the edge of these dollar pads. So I think there's gonna be some fish right here on the edge. It'd be perfect for this little Texas rig to throw out there. You know, we threw around the frog a little bit, covered some water, tried to get some of the active ones in the pads and the dollar pads. Now we're gonna take a Texas rig, slow down, fish the edge, see if we can get some of them to bite.
Oh, yes. Oh, he is in those pads. Come on, fish. <laughs> Dude, I had to crank that fish. I haven't done that in a minute. That felt good. That felt good. He's not a big one, but heck. I was on the stroker curl. Threw it right out there on the edge and I felt tick, 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 tick. <laughs> little tiny guy. Give you a little toss, bud. Sorry. Hate to have to throw him, but I don't have a choice. That was awesome right there. Got one on the stroker. This thing has just been killing it recently, guys. So we switched up, you know, we threw the frog, we covered the top, got the bites that we could. Then we're like, you know what? Let's, let's give them a different presentation. Let's fish a different part of this or this vegetation. We got the stroker crawl, started throwing it on the edge. Boom, got a bite. That's awesome, man. That just shows you that's why you need to have different baits. I got another one, same cast. Oh yeah, that's a decent one. They might be loaded out there. Golly, boys. Ah. Ah. Come on. Yes. He's still on. Ah. <laughs> Dude, this is so much fun, man. I have not fished some crazy cover like this in a while. That was the same cast. They might be stacked out there. I didn't even move it. It hit the bottom and that fish already had it. Look how dark they are in this vegetation. That is awesome, man. That's four fish already, dude. This is crazy because usually I don't catch them like this here. Fish must be biting right now. Old stroker curl getting munched. You gotta love that, man. We're gonna throw it right back in the same spot. There might be more. That's two casts in a row I threw right out there and got hammered. Look at the stuff that we're pulling up too. I don't even know. Look at that. Ugh, it's all slimy. It's hard to get those fish through that cover. That's very important. All right, so let's talk about something for a second. So when you're fishing heavy cover like this, especially how I'm throwing out, I mean, you guys can see there's not, you know, I'm way out there. You know, there's at least 15 foot right here just for me to all the dollar pads and lily pads and grass. And then there's another 15 foot of lily pads and dollar pads that go out. So when you hook this fish, we have to huff them, guys. Your rod needs to be up in the air. The last thing you want to do is hook set sideways and be pulling sideways and dragging that fish. You want to keep your rod high, keep that constant pressure, crank down on that fish and huff them in. Another important thing is to make sure you're using, you know, some heavy line when fishing this stuff because if you're over here throwing 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon, I don't know. I got another one, same spot, boys. All right, watch me. I'm keeping my rod up. You guys can't really see, but look, I'm keeping my rod up, skirting that fish across. Bro, this is crazy. Holy cow, they're not big, but they're just loaded out there. I took my stroker crawl too. I'm gonna have to go back to my car, see if I have another one. I got him right by the eye. Beautiful little fish. You guys saw what I did there. You know, I hook set, I kept my rod high. You guys probably didn't even see my rod and reel in the frame. And I was just cranking that fish across the grass. Like I said, if you go sideways, that fish is gonna get all up in this stuff and you're gonna lose them, I promise you. You gotta keep that constant pressure. Keep your rod high. I don't think I've talked about this, which is really good, really good topic right now. But keep that rod high, crank that fish in. You know, a lot of people ask me, no, why are you reeling so fast? No, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? That is why, you know, you're, if you're fishing stuff like this, super heavy vegetation, you don't have a choice. If you let off on that fish, he's gonna end up coming off. So another pretty bass, give him a little toss. That's five, just like that, man. I'm gonna go see if I have some more stroker crawls in my truck. Well, I didn't have any stroker crawls, but I have a few clouts in here. We're gonna give that cloud a try. I don't know if they're gonna eat it as good. Like recently, I haven't been catching them as much on the clout, but I've, they've been loving the stroker crawl. And it puts off a little bit of vibration. Got those little tails fluttering and through the water. They've been digging that, man. Like recently, that's that's really all I've needed to throw to catch fish. Like, yeah, I wanna experiment with some frogs and different stuff and, and just have some fun. But at the end of the day, you know, if I just went out with a stroker crawl, I can freaking whack the heck out of them. So let's try this clout out. Let's see if they'll eat it over here. They're in the same area. There's so many fish stacked right there. 
We caught three in the same hole. And you think about this too. We caught this two frogfish in the exact same spot as well. So that's another thing to think about. Like when you catch a fish, hone in on that spot. That's one thing I realized fishing thick and heavy vegetation is that usually when you find the fish, you can keep catching them, you can duplicate it. There's usually more than one fish there. So keep that in mind. You, you catch one, throw a couple more casts there. Make sure you know you, you've fished the water correctly and you've covered it good because there could be a lot more fish out there to, that you could catch. Look at that. Oh, oh, he came off. That was my bad. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he stole it. He freaking stole it. That was my last good one, man. There's so many fish right there. They are just stacked on that drop off. Look at that. Oh, now let me tell you why this is a problem because these other ones are, I only have one more in this bag and it's already used. It's used pretty good. We're, <laughs> we're just gonna have to use this little turd right here. I had not come prepared for this. I thought I was just gonna be frog fishing these pads for the most part. A little turd, I should eat that. Let's give her a beam. Yep. All right, we're gonna catch one right here. I think he already hit me. Yep. Oh man. Oh, he pulled off. That felt like a good one. Oh no. That was like the first fish today that actually like felt pretty big right there. Like this frog fish I watched jump up and I thought they were big, but that one actually felt very large. Dang, man. There's some big ones in here too. Don't let it fool you. When you find some spots with this vegetation like this, there's usually a bunch of big bass. Golly, man, that one felt like a good one. I threw it in there and he hit it right away. There's another one. Oh, no. <laughs> this is crazy. Dude, one just hit me as I was reeling it in. How many fish are right there? This is crazy, man. I really want to hook a good one. That fish that I lost, I'm telling you, that was a good fish. I really want to just go down there and see how many fish are stacked up. So we probably had like five or six bites in that one, one area. Guys, I have an idea. I have a killer idea. I'm going to go re-rig. Since I'm kind of out of the clouts and the stroker crawls right now, I have a, I have a brilliant game plan. I think that they're going to munch the way that they're eating this. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this Texas rig off. We're gonna take the weight off. We're gonna take the cloud off. We're gonna tie just the EWG on the hook. This is a three aught, by the way. I wish I had a four, but the three aughts will work just fine. Tie a basic uni knot, cinch her down, boom. Now we're gonna take a Zoom Super Fluke. Yes, you guys guessed it. I know some of you guys were already like, I know exactly what Noah's doing. And you guys were correct. The way that these fish are munching, they're gonna eat a super fluke. We're gonna throw it in there and they're gonna crank this thing, let me tell you. That is money. Just a pearl white, very basic. Right there, that's the rig. You guys know how I said it was like super humid? Like, it's been super humid, but today was pretty nice. It is just, it is, the humidity is creeping upon me right now. We got that zoom super fluke. Watch this, man. Watch this. The way that they're stacked out there, they're gonna munch this right here. It's good to give them something different too. You know, they saw that crawl and that sank over. Look at that. Yo, is this a big one? Come on, fish. Ugh. Ugh. Guys, holy cow. Oh, he broke me off. That's that's exactly why I need braid. Oh man, that that hurts my heart. That hurts my heart. I just that's our first cast. We just rigged it up, and I actually felt like a good one. Man, I'm kind of upset about that. I mean, fishing thick stuff like that, and that's what happens. A 17 pound fluorocarbon. I really should be using braid in this. Man, that's all right. Let's go see if we have something else to rig up with. All right, back to the rigging station. This is what we're gonna use. These are the Stout White Guy hooks by Six Cents. If you wanna get a discount, you can. These are the ones I've been using. These are three aught. They've been working very well. I like the four aughts too. I, I really love the four aughts, but three aught and four aught, they're both good. I recommend the four aught if you guys are gonna go buy some regular White Gap hooks, but these are legit, man, sharp hooks. All right, here we go. Back in business, baby. 
back in business. If you guys are wondering how I'm rigging this, you go right through the head, all right? All the way up, you break it through, twist the bait back around, line it up on the hook, okay? Now you're gonna line this up with the fluke and right where this back piece hits, that's where you're gonna penetrate the hook. Boom, tuck it in, make it weedless, right there. Beautiful little fluke. All right, here we go. We can't lose them this time. These fish are smart, man. Right when they eat it, they start running right towards the grass. They know exactly what they're doing. All right, we're going back to the frog for a minute. I want to try it out. It's been a second. The other bike calmed down a little bit. The reason I think the other bike calmed down is because I freaking caught so many. One and two, I think I just hooked a ton. I, I mean, I hooked to so many of them and they just came off or broke me off. We probably had the opportunity to catch a lot more fish. I just could not, could not get them to stay pinned. It's hard fishing this bank because when you're so far away from the water and then you're so far away from the edge of these pads. <laughs> Looks like they're chasing bait out there. This flu could be perfect for it if I can just make the right cast, pick the fluke back up. Couldn't really get any more on that frog. I don't know. I feel like they're just roaming the edge of the, the pads rather than being up in it, which makes sense. See, today is overcast. When it's overcast, you know, like I always talk about, those fish, they start roaming. You know, if it's very sunny out, those fish would be more pushed up under those pads. But right now with the cloud cover up, these fish are roaming a little bit more. They're more roaming the edge and, and eating bait fish. I mean, I've seen it. I'm watching it with my own two eyes. I feel like we could throw that frog and catch a fish here and there, but the good bite's gonna be fishing on the edge of that stuff. So we're just gonna keep this going. That should, that should be a fish right there. No! Ah. Wait, wait. I actually have them. Do I have a fish? There's no way. I do have a free. <laughs> I've knocked myself out. I do have a fish. He's so small, I didn't even know I had him. These guys are just tiny. They're chewing like crazy over there. I think there's some big ones in the mix though. Cause that one I hooked, I'm telling you, I think that was a good one. Twinkie. Threw my fluke off the hook. Let's grab us another one. Not a big one, but whatever. Still a fish. Guys, if I was in a kayak or a boat, we would be smoking the fish. I was actually looking across the, the lake over here. There's some more fish eating bait on that other point. If we just were in a kayak, oh man, we would put a hurting on these fish. Throwing a little stroker crawl, throwing a fluke and a frog. Oh man, I feel like a popper would smoke them. Watch, so we throw it out there, we just don't let it sit. Oh my gosh. Yes, a lot better than those last ones. Only about a pound and a half still, but it's a lot better than those freaking tiny, tiny, that ain't even a pound and a half, that's just a pound. Those other ones are like half a pound. <laughs> That was good though. I got him right up. Like I hooked at him and I was skirting him across that grass. The other ones keep on getting me up in it. He wasn't as smart as the other ones, surprisingly. Wow. 